Amit and Sumit are two friends and they love playing trump cards. And also, they exchange trump cards regularly. Now, there is a small problem. Whenever they exchange trump cards, sometimes one has more cards and one has less cards. And this leads to regular quarrels. So, they go to Ravi Bhaiya and they say that this is the problem which they are facing. Now, Ravi Bhaiya gives a solution. Well, the solution is very simple and you must have already thought about it. Why don't they count the cards? If they count the cards, then there will be no confusion. 10 cards taken, 10 cards given. So simple. So, counting is very important. Even simple task like exchanging trump cards requires counting. And counting is not a modern issue. This has been an issue right from the ancient times. Now, in the ancient times, people did not perform scientific calculations like us, but they hunted animals. Now, when these people hunted animals and they were done with animals in one area, they went forward to a new area. Now, they constantly discovered new areas where there were more animals. For example, this particular person has discovered this area which has so many animals. Now, he wants to communicate the same to one of his tribesmen. Now, what does he communicate? There are many animals. So, his friend wanted to know how many animals and he had no definite answer except for that he saw many animals. Now, this particular problem was a big problem for them. So, they developed a number of methods which started with counting using fingers. Well, it was an effective method but the problem was that we have only 10 fingers. What about larger numbers? So, they also devised newer methods like marking on rock. Now, even these markings became pretty complex once the number of animals increased. So, they developed some newer techniques like counting using stones. But again, this was also confusing as the numbers became bigger and bigger. So, counting was always a problem for them. Now, not only in this time, this became more complex once they started trading. During trade, they needed to exchange animals and different fruits and vegetables and without counting, if they did that, they would have problem because somebody would have more profit and somebody would be in loss. So, counting and numbers became very important for them. So, what did they do about it? Well, they developed number system. That is, they developed a number of symbols representing specific counting numbers. For example, for 10, they had one symbol. For 100, they had another symbol. So, if they wanted to write 100, they did not mark 100 marks on a piece of rock or they did not use fingers. They simply wrote one symbol. And similar symbols were developed by different civilizations that made their mathematical work very simple. Now, these symbols were different for different civilizations and among them was the Roman Empire. Now, Roman Empire was a very big civilization and they had so many people and they traded so many different things. So, they definitely required a number system so that they can easily calculate. Now, what number system do we use? Well, we use the Arabic number system. Now, in Arabic number system, we have total of 10 different digits and the combination of these digits helps us write any particular count or number. Similarly, the Romans had their set of symbols. The first three symbols in that set were I, V and X. Now, Romans combined their symbols to make different numbers and I, V and X symbols were 
combined in different ways to write numbers till 39. So let's see how they use these numbers to represent different counts. First of all, let's come to zero. Now they had no symbol for zero because they never felt the need of representing zero because zero means nothing and zero was not invented at their time. So they had no symbol for zero. What about one? Well, they wrote one I and that was one. What about two? They wrote two I's and this is how they represented two. What about three? Three I's. What about four? Well, according to the natural order, you may say that four, we can write it as four I's. But this is not correct. Can you see? It is becoming confusing again. If you keep on writing more I's, you will not be able to identify easily which number is being represented or even if you identify, it will take a lot of time. And even the Romans realized that this is a problem. So they decided that they will never use four consecutive symbols at once. So while writing a Roman number, never use any symbol more than three times consecutively. So if you represent four in terms of I's, then you will write I four times, which means you are writing I continuously more than three times, which is not allowed in Roman numbers because it becomes confusing. So what was the solution? Well, the solution was that they came up with a new symbol for five that is V. So V is equal to five. Now the question arises that we were trying to represent four. Then how does having a symbol of five help? Well, they developed a new rule with this symbol. And what is the rule? The rule says that when smaller numerals are on the left hand side of the bigger ones, subtract them. So this is five. So when you write V, it represents five. And when you write I, it represents one. Now, when you write V and I together in this way, where I is on the left of V, then what is happening? V is five and I is one. And when you place I to the left, you are subtracting one. So it is five minus one, that is four. So how do you write four in terms of five? That is in terms of V. Well, we write V and then we write an I to its left, which means we are talking about one less than five, which is four. So this is how four is represented in Roman numerals. So we have one, two, three, and then we have four, which is one less than five. So we have I to the left of V and then we have V that is five. So what will be the next one? Well, so how do we write six in this case? Well, we know that V represents five. Now we have one more than five. So we write an I to the right of it. Now, what does this mean? Well, if you have a smaller number to the right of a larger number, we add as we had a smaller number to the left of the larger number, we subtracted. So this is the basic rule of Roman numerals. So when you have a smaller number to the left of the larger number, you subtract. So it becomes four. And when you have a smaller number to the right of the larger number, then we add. So we have five plus one, six. Similarly for seven, we have five, six, seven. And then for eight, five, six, seven, 
8. So, what will be the natural order in this case? Well, you may say that for 9, you can write 9 as 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But there is a problem. We know that we can never use one symbol consecutively more than three times. But here we are using it the fourth time which is not allowed in case of Roman numerals. So what is the solution? Well, we have a new symbol that is X which represents 10. So this is 10. But how does it solve our problem of 9? Well, just similar to 4, for 9 we write 1 less than 10. So, 1 less than 10 to the left of 10 when we write i then it is 1 less than 10. So, what will be 9? 9 will be i to the left of x. So, we got all the 10 numbers. So, this is how we write 4 and 9. And we have these symbols which are used to write these two numbers. So, you see in the case of Roman numerals for the first 10 numbers we use only i till 3. After that v is introduced. So, we use a combination of v and i and then we have v and then combination of v and i continues and then again we have a new symbol which is x. Similarly, new symbols are introduced as and when required. In this case, the combination of these three symbols can be used till 39. So, what are the rules which we saw here? Well, first of all, we know that first three symbols in Roman numerals are i, v and x. i represents 1, v represents 5 and x represents 10. Also, when smaller numerals are on the right hand side of bigger ones, add them. As you can see, in this case, i plus i plus i, that is 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. v, i, i, that is again we have to the right, so 5 plus 1 plus 1, that is 7. And then 10 and 1, 10 plus 1, that is 11. So, when you have smaller numerals, to the right of larger numerals you add them. Now, when smaller numerals are on the left hand side of the bigger ones, subtract them. So, in this case i is smaller than v, so it is subtracted 5 minus 1 that is 4. Similarly, i and x, so 10 minus 1 that is 9. Also, it is very important that while writing a Roman number, never use any symbol more than three times consecutively that is one after another. So, you see all these style of writing are not allowed in Roman numbers. So, you cannot have four i's together in any of these case or even four v's together or four x's together. None of these symbols can be represented more than three times consecutively. So, how can we represent this? Well, we have 2 and 5. So, can we simply take this and this and can we represent this number? Not really. You do not need to think about single digits, but about the number as a whole. So, we have 25 here. So, if you break up 25 in terms of available numbers, what can you do? Well, the largest number you can use is 10. So, you have 10 plus 10 which is 20 and then you have plus 5 which is 25. Now, in terms of Roman numerals, how can you write this? Well, 10 is nothing but x, this 10 is again x and 5 is v. Now, what do we see? They are being added and when we do addition in Roman numerals, we place the symbols to the right. So, x to the right another x and to the right v. So, 
ट्वेंटी फाइव विल बी एक्स एक्स वी सो यू सी टू द राइट यू कीप ऑन एडिंग एंड यू गेट ट्वेंटी फाइव सो ट्वेंटी फाइव कैन बी रिटर्न एज एक्स एक्स वी नाउ लेट सी अनदर नंबर सो नाउ वी हैव थर्टी फोर नाउ हाउ डू वी राइट थर्टी फोर इन टर्म्स ऑफ रोमन न्यूमरल्स वी नो दैट वी कैनॉट रिप्रेजेंट इट सिंपली एज थ्री एंड फोर इट्स थर्टी फोर अगेन वील स्टार्ट विथ द लार्जेस्ट नंबर विच कैन बी यूज टू रिप्रेजेंट दिस सो वी हैव टेन एज द लार्जेस्ट नंबर सो वी यूज टेन देन वी नीड थर्टी राइट वी जस्ट हैव टेन सो वी कैन एड अनदर टेन दैट बिकम्स ट्वेंटी वी कैन एड अनदर टेन नाउ इट बिकम्स थर्टी सो आफ्टर थर्टी वी हैव फोर सो वी एड फोर सिंपली सो वी हैव टेन प्लस टेन प्लस टेन प्लस फोर नाउ हाउ डू वी रिप्रेजेंट दिस इन टर्म्स ऑफ रोमन न्यूमरल्स वेल इट विल बी एक्स एक्स अगेन एक्स अगेन एंड देन फॉर फोर वी हैव दिस सो आई एंड वी नाउ दे आर बींग एडेड कंजिक्यूटिवली so how do we do it well it is x another x another x and then iv that is 4 so 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 4 that is 34 so did you see how we represented this number we started with the largest possible we started with the largest possible symbol and then gradually we went to the smallest one so it is 34 represented in roman numeral form and similarly all the numbers till 39 are represented using the symbols i v and x so we started with i and then we have iv then v that represents 5 and then a combination of these numbers are used till 39 now why till 39 and not 40 because what do we see here 10 plus 10 plus 10 that is 30 and then we have a 9 39 after that for 40 if we use the same symbols we'll have to use 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 10 that is 4x together which is not allowed in roman numerals you can never have four symbols consecutively in roman numerals and that is why 40 cannot be represented by x in terms of x or in terms of x in v and as a result we have newer symbols after 39 so i v and x are not the only symbols in roman numerals we have l which represents 50 we have c which represents 100 we have d which represents 500 and we have m which represents 1000 and similarly we have more symbols for larger numbers and all these symbols are used according to how large the number is and these are some common examples of roman numerals which we use even today so you can see in watches and clocks roman numerals are used many times as in this case it's wrestlemania x x i and v which means 10 10 inv is 4 so it's 24 so it's wrestlemania 24 and when we see this particular name here iphone x what does it represent well it represents the 10th model of iphone so it's basically iphone 10 in terms of roman numerals and of course we have all these classrooms which are usually written in roman numerals so we have class 5 class 6 7 and so on so all these are common examples of roman numerals so roman numerals were also a number system used by romans and in that the first three symbols were i v and x which were used to represent numbers till 39 don't forget to subscribe to our channel
You can also register for free at deltastep.com to get all learning resources as per ICSE, CBSE, IB, Cambridge, or any other curriculum. Over 5,000 amazing lectures across maths, science, English, and social science. Our unique interactive video technology keeps you engaged, and our iDictionary feature allows you to quickly revise any concept. Master each topic at your own pace with our adaptive practice technology and 1 million plus questions. Get instant answers and detailed solutions. Be exam ready by taking unlimited mock tests. Performance analysis along with actionable feedback. Personal tutors to resolve your slightest of doubts. That's not all. You also get amazing prizes like PlayStations, iPads, watches and many more along with certificates through our Earn As You Learn program. So at deltastep.com, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.